try to run an electrified chain. It may be a simple line drawing, but it wasn't Let that easy on the now. tractor. So I decided to have a go with something else. art materials is a rubbishy old cardboard box yeah they're so versatile you know you can use the corners you can use the flaps you can tear off bits of the side and where do i keep all my old art materials in my rubbish cupboard of course take a cardboard box as big as you can find and pull the top flap up on one side like that and the bottom flap out like that cut the whole of this side out and you'll have something that looks like that now you could use that to make a little cupboard but let's not mess around here let's go for the big one take the rest of the cardboard box and open it out flat like this now this part will be the cupboard and these two flaps will be your cupboard doors now to fill the cupboard just take some assorted boxes and cartons that you're going to throw out in the rubbish and just lay them into position on your cupboard first of all onto what will be the bottom shelf uh, like that and it's a good idea to use different types of cartons and boxes different sizes because you're going to be putting different things into your rubbish cupboard and then do the top shelf just putting them into position where you think the top shelf is going to be and you notice here i've just neatly trimmed the edges of the boxes like that so i can get things into them without hurting my fingers and don't forget if you're going to use plastic bottles wash them out otherwise they'll really pong now when you've got your top shelf into position and you're happy with it just draw a line underneath the boxes like that just to show you the position of your top shelf and then move your boxes off your cupboard top and bottom and then put the rest of the detail of your cupboard in so okay i'll complete that shelf that's the top shelf now the bottom shelf be down here and at this stage you don't have to be neat at all because we're going to be painting it in a minute this is just a rough guide for you and i'm going to do the whole frame of the cupboard in like that and then i'm going to do the frame of the two doors in and don't forget this is the inside of the door so you would see the frame like this there like that and one on the other side and you can put in other little bits of detail later on like hinges oh, right. and the locks and then it's just a rough guide now listen this is very important I, I this area here tired. and this area needs to be painted black oh, or a very dark color because this is the back of the cupboard and you want to make it look as if your cupboard has got depth now to paint your cupboard using poster paint or acrylic paint i've got some I'm, acrylic I'm paint right. here and you can paint your cupboard any color you like i'm going to paint it brown because after all it is a cupboard and i'm going to give it a wood wood finish or a wood color or should i say antique pine finish as they say <laughs> in the shops that is just sloshing it on you can do it a little bit more neatly than i am and when you've done the frame go over the whole of your cupboard do your doors as well don't forget to paint the whole of your doors in whatever color you're using and don't forget to do these bits in a dark color and when you've painted that and it's all dry and you've put in your detail you'll have something that looks like this wait for it Ta -da! wow Look at that. and you can see what i've done here is different color brown just to give it a nice wood effect and i've painted these two areas black and you see how it makes it look as if the cupboard has got a lot of depth in it and you can see right into the cupboard and look at the detail i've put in here this is just ordinary silver pen for the hinges and the latches and i've even gone around all the detail with black permanent marker and this is a good effect you've seen me do this many times before watch this just some wispy lines and the brown paint and permanent marker wispy lines and curls and you get this so it's a great wood grain effect like that and then just pop your boxes back into position there and that one there i think and again you can just organize these as you go and get them into the position that you want them in i'm going to put my bottle up there just about fit into my cupboard look at that and put that there like that 
that on there. And then you can, if you want, put some more, more boxes on top of these boxes. If I pop that one onto there, like that, and then I just cut some boxes, the flat fronts of the boxes, and just snip them in the back, and it makes it look as if your shelves are really full and your cupboard is bursting with goodies. Again, I put another little box on top like that. And when you're happy with the position of your boxes and cartons, just take a very strong glue, PVA glue or an all-purpose glue, and glue them into position. And here it is, my rubbish cupboard. And you know what? It's been in the Art Attack office for over two years. Two and the years. secret to it lasting so long? This stuff. PVA glue. Now, once you've stuck all your boxes into position, you can, if you want to, cover the whole lot in a layer of PVA glue. Now, it'll look terrible when you've first done it, but then it'll dry see-through and it'll make all your boxes nice and strong. And what do I keep in my rubbish cupboard? Well, I've got my pens and my pencils and paintbrushes and CDs and even letters and notes. Lots of bits and pieces in there. Try it yourself. A rubbish cupboard. Do you know what? I was looking through my scrapbook the other day, and do you know what I found? A photograph of a special guest star. Now, it's not often I have someone here with me, is it? And you'll never guess who it was. It was me mummy. Honestly, oh. take a look at this. There she is, me mummy. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> For thousands of years, explorers have risked the curse of oh. the mummy's tomb to reveal the secret of ancient Egyptian art. It can now be revealed. Instant coffee, actually. Come and have a look at this. Mix one teaspoon of instant coffee with about half a pint of water and PVA glue. Now, PVA glue is that white school glue that you get in the squidgy bottles. And your mixture needs to be about two parts water to one part glue. Now, hold on. What's this got to do with Egyptian art, I hear you ask? Well, take a piece of white paper, any size, and just lay strips of gauze bandage that you've cut to lengths slightly longer than your paper. And just lay them side by side, next to each other, on the paper. Excuse me. And the idea is to just cover your paper completely in raggedy bandage. And again, it doesn't matter if they hang over the edge, because it's all part of the effect. When you've covered your paper, just take a brush and start to literally slop on your mixture of coffee and PVA glue. And again, you don't have to be neat. We never are on Art Attack, are we? Don't put too much on there, because the idea is that you're trying to get the bandage to soak in the PVA glue mixture and glue itself to the paper. Now, I'm not going to do the, the whole lot here, but when you've done it, when you've covered all the bandage, just put it to one side to dry, leave it overnight, and when it's dry, it will look something like that. And the coffee has actually stained the bandage so it looks old and mummified. And in fact, the whole paper has stiffened like some ancient Egyptian papyrus paper. Brilliant effect. Now to decorate it. Well, the Egyptians themselves, they would have made some dyes with which to paint. But I find you can get a great effect if you use wax crayon or chalk. Now, the ancient Egyptian art was quite primitive, so you don't have to do a brilliant drawing on this. It's just an effect that you're looking for. You don't even have to draw anything that's Egyptian. You can make something up yourself, but I like these Egyptian symbols. Now, the faces, they weren't brilliant, and they always seemed to have these square haircuts, and they had an awful lot of eye makeup. Now, the colours that they used, they used a lot of blues. Oh, snapping the crayon there. Yeah. They used a lot of blues and a lot of golds. You've probably seen that on those pictures of the Tutankhamun exhibition. And just put those colours on. And try to keep your crayon nice and sharp if you can, because it makes a good thin line then. I'm just going to draw very thin arms, because they always seem to draw thin arms. Again, snapping my crayon there. It must be the case of the mummy. <laughs> they always had thin arms. And for some reason, 
they had the bodies facing to the front, like that, and the arms and the feet facing to the side. Maybe they were a different shape to us, I don't know. There it is. And when you've finished it, colour it in completely, and it will look something like that. As you can see, I've decorated it here with some ancient Egyptian symbols. Well, um, actually, only one of them is Egyptian, that one. I'm not too sure what it means, but they used to write about their lives and their families and friends and even their hobbies. So what I've done is I've put in a paintbrush and scissors for my hobby. And another good idea is to put in your initials back to front and there's some more symbols. And there it is, some mummified Egyptian art. Try it yourself. And when you've finished it, show it to your mummy. What do you think? Dead nice. <laughs> hmm. Looking through my scrapbook, it's amazing how many times I've cheated. Take trees, for example. Now, loads of people think they're hard and fiddly to draw. I just cheat. I let the pen do all the work for me. Take a brown pen and hold it at the end like that. And then don't draw a tree at all. Just draw a Y shape and let the pen do all the work. Now you notice that my hand's shaking and the pen's going all over the place. That's because I'm holding it right at the edge there. It doesn't matter because it actually helps with the effect of the tree. Draw a Y shape like that. And then on this arm of the Y, draw two branches, still holding the pen at the top. And then on those two branches, draw another two branches. And then on those branches, draw another two branches. And so on. And just keep drawing two branches on the two branches that you've just drawn. And when you've finished, it'll look like this. OK, so that's how you get a tree with branches on. But what about the bark? Well, cheat with that as well. Now, to create a good wood effect, just draw a couple of sixes on the trunk, like that, and then just some wispy lines going round those sixes, just to create a really streaky wood effect, like that. Look at that. And when it comes to doing leaves on your picture, just draw dots in green like that and you know if this gets a bit boring then just take a handful of green pens or pencils and do loads of dots and it's a lot quicker <laughs> well, what about this you could always use an old stiff brush with some paint on it and it's just a case of dipping it into some green poster paint like that and then just wiping off most of the paint and the idea is to get your brush as dry as possible so don't put any water on it and then just hold it vertically above your picture and stab it down onto the paper and look what happens look at that hundreds of leaves start to appear it's a really good cheat isn't it it saves you drawing each leaf individually and the more paint you put on and the more leaves you stab onto your picture, the thicker they get. Look at that. And there it is. Not bad for a cheat, eh? So you guys can play.